Mike, uh, first, I got to say it is an honor to have a chance to speak with you, Triumph being so legendary, the architects for Canadian rock. But I got to tell you something, man. I've interviewed everybody in the band. You're the only one over the years I haven't been able to talk to. I waited throughout this whole award show sitting in a seat next to you as you're sitting right now to finally get this interview. I am so thrilled about this, my friend. Well, Rudy, that's great, but I think we did interview at one point, oh, maybe on the phone. On the phone, but I'm talking about in person. Oh, in person. Then yeah. I agree with you. We have never done it in person, and I've been looking forward to this too, Rudy. <laughs> you know, when you think about what's going on with tonight, as we're talking here, we're at Canadian Music Week. It is the uh, live, was it the Live Music Industry Awards. You guys have been honored tonight, legends of live music. How does it feel when you're, you know, you see these young kids out there, old school out there, and they're all saying to Triumph, thank you for what you guys have created for so many years? Uh, well, it's, you know, it's an honor, you know, that it's, it's something that you don't think about when you're doing what you do. Um, Usually it's like, you know, after you're finished, you get all the awards. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys aren't really done, though, you know? Well, pretty much so. I mean, we haven't played in a long time. Um, true. True. But we're still active in different things. You know, we have a documentary that's being done by Banger Films, so we're active in that. Wow. Yeah, that's going to be really cool. Especially and for folks who don't know about Banger Films, these guys know how to put together rock royalty tributes and to be seeing something like that when do we think we're going to get a chance to see something like that? uh it's you have to talk to them you know it's one of those they just finished a zz top one which yes. is which uh is coming out soon i think um but uh you know they wanted to shoot this right this we didn't know this was going to happen the the legends of uh the legends of live so that you know they had to put things back you know, in order to shoot some of this for the documentary. And there's some other things coming up, I think, that they're going to want to shoot. So I'd say late 2000, late next year, maybe. I'm so looking forward to that. And what are you up to these days yourself? Too? That's a good question. I ask myself that when I, get, <laughs> when I wake up in the morning. I go, what am I up to today? And then the phone rings and the bullshit starts, right? <laughs> and it's just, you know, a lot, a lot of stuff involved. You know, to try to still a franchise. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm involved in a lot of that. And it's just, uh, I'm busy doing stuff. You know, and that's important. But what was also important is the music, like I said, you guys created over the years, the live shows that you guys did. What was it like back then? knowing that you're competing with not just other great Canadian groups who are also architects, but dealing with what was going on in England, what was going on in the U.S. Live shows, it was just pure magic, and you guys, you guys rose to that level. Yeah, I mean, we were, um, we were uh, you know, amongst rock royalty for, for that, uh, a good section of the 80s, late 70s, right, th right through to 85, 86, 87. Um, you know, we worked with some of the top acts, you know, we co-headlined one of our th shows we did, we co-headlined the uh, Rose Bowl in, in uh, Pasadena, California with Journey, uh, you know, 110,000 people. It was, it was like, you know, half of them were, were our crowd, the other half was Journey's crowd. And then you know, they all were, and then they all became everybody's crowd, you know, so, and the S Festival, you know, which was an incredible thing for us. So, um, you know, we were with Foreigner. We, we did a, a bunch of shows with them, uh, stadium shows uh, called called the World Series of Rock. So we played baseball stadiums and football stadiums. You know, so it's it was really a, a great time. I mean, we got to live the dream. You know, yes, definitely did though. But but also, people should realize back then. You just didn't like release, uh, you know, an album that had like maybe ten songs, and then you were able to coast for like two or three years. It was album after album after album because you turned around, somebody else had an album out, and then you had to put an album out. I mean, jumping around in that top ten in that top forty, I couldn't, I could not understand how you guys did it and survived. Yeah, well, I, I can't either. <laughs> it was. Uh... You know, as soon as the tour ended, okay, what are we doing next? We're taking a week off. We start writing songs. We got to start recording, and and we got to start planning the next tour. You know, so it was like a baseball team. You know, you come back every spring, and and the, the fans come out to watch you play. You had to, you know, you had to be in the market every year, year and a half with a new product and uh, and a new show. So what was it also like watching that the the Canadian 
um, fabric grow the way it did throughout that time also. That must have been incredible too. Yeah, you know, Canada was um, so very insular back when we were we were starting out even and, and it was they didn't want you to leave the country you know and uh you were a deserter you were a traitor if you went to america but what you know what they didn't realize is you couldn't survive just playing canada you know you had you had 15 or 18 play dates and that was it that does not make a band's career you know so um we had to move abroad, you know, without question, we knew that, uh, but we always came back and did our Canadian tours. You know, it was part of the, part of because we did 20, 30 dates. We did places like Swift Grand and Fort Francis and you name it. We've, we played all the tertiary markets. But were people surprised though, saying, you're from where? You're from Canada? You mean where Eskimos live or, you know, like, were people like surprised that you guys were Canadian? Uh, not really. Uh, you know, the, the American rock fans really respected uh, the Canadians. You know, there was a point, I think, in, uh, I'd say, 1981, where uh, Canadian artists were represented 60% of the playlists of, uh, the, uh, on al album radio. So there was Heart, there was Triumph, there was Rush, there was Brian Adams, there was, uh, and we all had big records. I can't remember all the other, Loverboy. Uh, you know, so you, you add up those, those number of tracks, and don't forget Album Radio then played two or three songs from every album, if, if the album was any good, of course. But. That's true. What was your, for Triumph, what was your favorite album cover? Because people should realize back in the day, the album covers, it was art. I mean, you guys put a lot of thought into putting this in. What was your favorite? Wow, I think you know. I think the Just the Game album. Yeah, yeah. it was a gatefold, you know, which was hard to get. I had to go to New York and scream at the president of RCA Records to get them to do a gate. Well, we only do gatefolds because they're expensive for acts that have already sold a million records and blah blah blah. And I said, no, 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 you're not getting the picture. I know it would have cost. It's not that much more money. <laughs> Just like, you know, let's do it because we need it. And this album's going to be huge. And finally, they agreed to do it. And But putting together the game board and all the little things that, uh, the sayings and that, you know, and the, the, the winged thing. I give Rick, you know, Rick did most of the design work. But I think we all smoked up one night. None of us smoked. <laughs> and st it started to figure out the little phrases to put on the game board, you know, record record company drops the ball, move back two spaces or whatever. You know? What was the secret, do you think, with the band? Why did it work? I think because we were the three musketeers. Um, we never, you know, we never uh, met a door that we couldn't drive a semi through. You know, if the door was closed, we said, fuck it, let's open it. You know, people say, no, you can't do that. And we go, yes, we can. <laughs> so the no was never no. It was, you know, no, you can't do that. It's not done. It would say, oh, yes, we will. <laughs> uh, but, but I think the, uh, we survived because of our sense of humor. You know, not only the music and the show and all that, but I think as a band, um, uh, the laughter uh, that we had and the fun we had together, as well as the hard work and that, but we, there was moments where you just wanted to go shoot somebody and somebody would, you know, come up with something and you'd be on the floor killing yourself laughing in the dressing room or in the car or on a plane or something, you know. So we, we traveled together, we lived together, we did everything together, you know, we rocked the world together. So it's, it was just, uh, you know, again, I said we lived the dream, you know, it's like very few people get the chance to do that. What do you miss the most? Not going to the airport and getting on a plane, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I don't miss that at all. You know, it's funny you say that. There are a lot of people who say that um, these days, you know, after all this and stuff, if they hear a plane fly by, they just get the heebie-jeebies. Is it like that for you? I hate traveling. It's like it used to be fun, you know. You have got to get to the airport a half an hour before your flight. You know, you go through customs or if it was within Canada, you know, you go get on the plane and no big deal. You know, and now, you know, since 9-11, it's become, uh, you know, a nightmare. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And water, you know, I hate paying four bucks for a little bottle of water that, <laughs> that you know, should cost 50 cents. I agree, man. <laughs> I agree. Look, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but um, if there's ever anything that you would want Triumph to be labeled as in, in history, what would it be? 
um, we touched people's lives. We were uh, that band or that song that somebody was considering, you know, doing something really bad to themselves, and they they heard that song or they put that song on, and it changed their life. Um, or we got fan letters to that effect and phone calls and stuff, and it's something that you you can't put a price on. You know, you can't. Uh, you know, just the fact if it was just one person, you know, you you did something that is, you know, magnificent in my mind. Absolutely, man. Yeah. and you guys. The three of you, magnificent. Thank you so much for this interview. Congratulations on the honor you got today. I know there are going to be more honors coming your way, but most importantly, thank you for paving the way for the music of today. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rudy. It's a pleasure. Always a pleasure speaking to you, but now we're together. In person. <laughs> Love it.